What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new features contained inside the newest version of D5 Render version 2.7. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can check out all of the new features in the D5 Render 2.7 release notes. I'll link to that on this page. In addition, if you do want to check out D5 Render, if you do it through my affiliate link, you do get a slight discount as well. That's going to be at the sketchupessentials.com slash D5. And so let's start off with what I think is probably the biggest and best addition to this new version, the new scattering system. And so the way the scattering tools work is you can find them over in your add scatter function at the top of the page. Now you've got two options in here. You can scatter by material or you can scatter by model. Generally speaking, I think you're going to use the material the most. And this is the reason why. This is a SketchUp model that I brought in, but notice how if I mouse over it, it's going to select like the whole model. So a lot of the time you're probably not going to want to do that. So you're probably going to want to do by material unless you were to bring in a whole nother model. So if I brought in like a full separate model for a surface, then you might use the select model in order to set up a scatter system for that. But generally speaking, you're going to do a select material. And so when I do a select material, what I can do is I can come in here and notice how as I mouse over this, it's going to give me a little selection box over any of the materials that we have in here. So for example, if I click on this one, it would create a scatter area with this area. Now note that you can hold the shift key and click in order to select another area. Or notice how you can tap the control key to go to subtractive selection, meaning you're going to remove objects from your selection. But now if I click on the option for create, what this is going to do is this is going to pop up an object. Notice how you can't see it unless you go to objects over here, but it's created a scatter system that allows me to scatter objects on the surface. And so notice how over here on the right hand side, you've got scatter areas as well as areas for content. We'll look at scatter areas in a second. But if we look into the content section right here, notice how we can drop assets in here. So for example, I can click in this box and it's going to pop up my asset browser and I can pick individual objects. So for example, say that we pick this uh, low poly flower right here, that's going to take this object and it's going to scatter it on the surface like this. Now we can definitely do that, but there's a better way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here, click on the little button in order to remove it. Notice how there's an option in here for presets. So if I click on content preset, what that's going to do is that's going to pop you up part of the asset browser and it's going to put you in the scatter section. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to select presets. And so what you can do is you can select one of these. So for example, say we were to select wild grassland, notice what it's going to do is it's going to create a scatter system of grassland in here. But the thing is the scatter systems just contain data. This still has to download all of the assets. So once it brings the assets in, we can go ahead and take a look at this. Notice what this has done is this is scattered based on that scatter preset. And this actually looks like amazing, having done like very little work to it. Now let's take a look at the area function as well. So if I click in here, do a select material and I add a scatter system to this yellow area right here. And so where this gets really cool is if I click on this option right here for scatter area and click on image divide, what that's going to do is that's going to let me use an image to divide this up. So if we look at this, notice if I click on the little drop down right here, there's a bunch of presets in here that we can use for splitting up your areas. So say I was to click on this one right here, what it's going to do is it's going to use an image to break up the surface and you can kind of see it in here and let's click back onto our scatter system but you can see the different sub areas and you can set the asset that's going to be placed on each sub area so for example for one of these maybe we're going to pick this flower right here and notice that you can adjust the transformations so say that i wanted this to be a lot smaller so i still want there to be random scaling but I want these plants to be a lot smaller than their default size, but notice how this is being placed only on the areas where this area is split out. This other one, I can come in here and do the same thing, but with a different plant. So I'm click on this one right here, click on this option. And again, you're going to want to adjust the transformation 
on that just because I'm using a smaller model. These are kind of real world size, so it's my bad for using that model, but notice how you can use this in order to use the image breakup in order to place those plans as well. And again, um, these look really good. So um, this whole thing looks really amazing. And then one other super cool option that they have is if you go into your asset browser, so we're gonna click over here real quick, and you go into the scatter section, they've got these large presets that are in here for things like forests and um, other things like that, like um, they've got forests, they've got fields, um, other things like that. But if I click on coniferous forest and then click on this object and click on create scatter area, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the option for update all so that these are all updated. And I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. Notice how this is creating a lot of stuff but this is actually creating a scattered forest in here based on those presets. And again, notice how those sub areas are all set up and then you can come in here and you can adjust things like the percentage of plants and other things like that. So you can use those presets in order to populate large areas directly inside of D5. All right, so next up, let's check out some of the AI features that have been added. Um, so basically what they've added is the ability to take artificial intelligence and um, upscale your textures to high resolution. And so note that this tool is specifically designed for lower resolution textures. So notice how textures that are larger than 2048 or have a long a long side larger than 4k don't support this feature so say that we went into like polyhaven right here and what we're going to do is we're going to download the lowest resolution of this wood material right here so if we download this and i'm i'm just going to bring down a couple of these maps and again note that this is the 1k resolution but say that we were to load these maps in like this well, if you go into the material and you can tap the I key in order to get the sample tool, but we're going to go into the base color map option and click on this little button right here. Now, notice what this is going to do is this is going to give you the option for Ultra HD and also make seamless, which we can talk about in a second. But Ultra HD is going to take that material map and it's going to generate a higher resolution version of it um, directly inside of D5 Render. And so notice how it's going to give you a preview of this. Well, within that preview, if we want to confirm that, we can just click on confirm and it's going to replace that texture material that was in there with the higher resolution texture material. So we can use this in order to upscale our textures using lower resolution textures. And so the other cool thing about this is I took a snip off of a Home Depot website of a flooring type and I applied it as a material which already looks really good but you can see how it's definitely got seams in here. Well this other option up above for make seamless allows you to take those images and it's going to take that image and it's going to try to make it seamless. So if I click on make seamless pay attention to like the seam right here. What this is doing is this is generating an AI image of the material that is seamless and so if you look at this as this updates Notice how this generated a much more seamless version of this material. So that is ultra powerful because you suddenly don't need to find a PBR version of your materials anymore. You can literally just bring this in and use the AI to make it seamless. All right, so next up we have a feature that I haven't even had a chance to try out, but it's super interesting. There's a text to 3D feature, which is currently in beta. And so at the moment, my understanding is that um, you need to actually apply to be able to test this out. So there's a survey you can fill out. Um, and if you get accepted into that beta program, then um, you'll be able to test this. But, and so basically the way this works is you've got this these objects in here and you can type in additional values. And so if you do get access to this, basically what it is is it uh, allows you to type in values and then it'll try to automatically generate different objects in there for you so like furnishings and other things like that now just looking at these they're not at a point where they're going to be like photorealistic or anything like that which is kind of to be expected with where the, the uh, technology is right now but it is a super interesting thing that they're testing out and so they have also upgraded the AI atmosphere match 
as well. So that's the one where you can type in or describe an atmosphere and this will use the artificial intelligence in order to match that atmosphere. And then as with most D5 features, there's a ton of other, or as with most D5 releases, there's a ton of other features in here as well, like improved virtual reality settings, which are gonna make your virtual reality more realistic. Support for the 3D connection space mouse in beta. Tools for switching different light types and also setting um, and also working with the target point for different lights so that lights will follow an object. And some additional camera movement templates for doing things like spiral panning, twisting, um, so um, basically spiraling camera movements. So you can check out all of these on the D5 Render What's New page, which I have a link to in the notes down below. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new features inside D5. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna check out D5, I have a link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.